Hello, this is Ben from Dr. B Games, and I'm here today to demonstrate some of the features that are available in Ruomoco, a voxel isosurface extraction engine that is available on the Unity Asset Store that can allow you to make some pretty wicked three-dimensional terrain. I say three-dimensional, you can use height maps to get 3D, but you can't get overhangs like this kind of stuff with the typical height map engine. So this one allows you to not only build terrain, but really anything that is based on three-dimensional data, you can turn it into um, meshes in Unity that you can manipulate either in the editor or allow your user to deform in real time. Imagine you're using uh, lasers or grenades that actually destroy the wall when you throw them. All right, so I have created a new project here, imported the base project. I'm going to create a new scene. The first thing you have to do is put an instance of Ruomoko terrain in, which is most easily accomplished by using the little terrain menu that it creates. But all that really does is creates an empty game object and puts the uh, Ruomoko terrain script on it. The next thing you have to do is have a game object which has a script that will tell this what the shape of the world is. And I'm going to put the Ruomoko density script on here, um, which uses a stack of uh, noise arrays to create a terrain. And after you do, you have to link that script in here. As soon as you do, you'll get this green cursor in the editor. Now if I click in here, it'll start building this, the terrain for me right away using that uh, random noise data. Right now I set it to only use um, a single layer of noise. So I'll get a relatively smooth uh, series of hills and valleys. And this wonderful bright pink telling me that I have a material error, that error being I didn't assign a material. So I'm going to pick one out of the ones that I've shipped inside of this. This one here um, comes set to make grass and hills. And I'm also going to immediately drop a first person controller in here. Let's see, one of these should work quite nicely. This guy looks good. We'll delete the regular main camera. We'll tell the terrain who to follow because it's going to try to dynamically generate the terrain to match this player. And now we got to make sure the player is going to stand on top of this terrain. Where is he? He's a little bit underneath. Let's fix that up. Get him up on top. Now uh, we hit go. And the world will fill in the empty spaces as we run around. Okay, so you can see here, using the single level of noise, that we get these hills that are generated based on these random values. And there's sort of a single slope that goes between each value. There's one down there in the valley, there's one up here in the peak. And then it's going to pick a new random value over there, make that next peak, on and on and on. That's okay, but real life terrain never looks like that. So what if we add a second level of noise? Change the scale a little bit just to help spread them out. And see, oh, I have an error here. Since we've already generated those blocks, they're going to be incorrect. So I'm going to clear them out. Click the clear voxels, so we erase them. Let's paint in some more. Let's see what we get. Looks like we're going to get a few more rocky hill sections. Check that our player is still, yep, still standing on top. Don't want him to appear underneath. Here we go. Okay, yep. As you can see, now we have the second set of random numbers are filling in between each of those peaks and valleys that we had before, there's now another random height that's being picked, which is causing 
slightly more interesting, more realistic hill structures. So if we keep on going with that, here we are playing with nine octaves, and we should see some more subtle variation and some little little ripples in the terrain. So it will smooth out some of those peaks and valleys that we were getting before. Yeah, here we go. There's some nice little bumps and sort of runs in the ground. As this is uh, trying to fill in ahead of us. Okay, so all of this world, we'll go look at the terrain object real quick, talk about some of the parameters that are available there. We've got this sort of base working quite nicely. So here, the actual engine that's generating it, if we paint in some of the world here in the editor, which we'll do, zoom in down on this here, I'll center on it. If I pick this dig option here, you get a new cursor. And now if I click in the world here, I may have to add some extra game objects. The engine will try to keep adding new objects around so that I don't ever go out of range and create an accidental tear in my terrain. Um, but I can deform it here. So if I wanted to build a cave, say, in the environment, we could just do this right now. Let's make a cave. Yeah, this is going a little bit slow, so I'm going to make my tool bigger and stronger. There we go. Uh, quite nice. Okay, build some new objects. Yes. Okay. So we have a little cave. All right, let's check that out in play. Here we are. And run over there. Sure enough, here's that little cave we dug in. So now we have this terrain, and we've got a cave. Cool. Didn't have to create a new game object, didn't have to go into our 3D modeling software, we can just build it right here. Some of the parameters that affect this during runtime, um, unload during play, if you check this, um, if the any blocks get further than whatever unload distance is away from the player, um, they'll be offloaded and destroyed. Um, so as you might imagine, um, in three dimensions here, this will end up creating a lot of blocks really fast um, for your player to keep them from running off the world. Um, and if your player is in that scene for 15 minutes or so, um, you could easily end up with thousands and thousands of blocks, which will end up with millions of vertices in your meshes um, and will slow your frame rate way down. So the first uh, solution is just to unload things that would be out of out of range. So if you turn on fog, go over to lighting and turn on fog, um, you could uh, have anything that would be fully in fog just get unloaded. So that would be one option. Um, if you just if you know what your world's going to look like, you could build the whole thing in the editor and not worry about the runtime generation. If, you know, make sure that you have walls the player can't get out of, or whatever your uh, puzzle is, and you could turn off generation during play which changes some options there. Um, Real-time sculpting, if you don't need your player to be able to deform things, you can turn that off. That will disable all of the sculpting abilities. Um, saves a lot of uh, data space because all the blocks, as soon as the mesh is generated, uh, they can just destroy the um, data that they use to generate the blocks. Um, LOD, so you can turn on levels of distance here. Um, which we can check real quick. I'll set them really close. Let's make this 25, 50, 75. And then when you hit go, it'll generate blocks. Um, and every time one of those thresholds is cost, crossed, uh, it'll reduce the vertex count of that block by two. So you'll get the first one will have an 8x8 eight eight grid on it. The next one will have 4x4. Four four, the next one will be 2x2, two two, um, etc. Um, you can see it also, because I've set it to be really close, uh, it causes this little bit of a mismatch because the next generation down, um, just the seams don't line up exactly. Um, however, Ruomoko will try to fill that in with a little curtain that will hang in there, um, which should even be 
uh, should should work even when you have well you can see there was a tear over there yeah you can get a few little tears but uh, it does its best and so typically you wouldn't put those seams right up close to the player you'd put them a couple hundred units away um, have some fog have some other you know grass or trees or what have you on the ground um, if we look at that in the scene let's get out of, let's not maximize this go over to the scene and look at it here you should be able to see the black little black lines showing us that yeah so the, right around the player we have higher density of vertices and out here further away we're getting a more reduced more efficient form of terrain so you can turn that on that'll that'll help your world out um render settings the size of the block so eight is i've found is pretty acceptable all the way around but if you need to change that uh, you can make each of these blocks have more vertices inside of them or fewer um, the gutter size so each block needs to have some extra voxel data around it in order to make a continuous seam with other um, blocks so that's how many extra voxels you can set that to one if you go to zero you will get gaps between them and if you go higher um, it doesn't really help a whole lot but that's in there just in case if you want to for some reason custom uh, color the vertices of your your world which uh, you you might want to do if you depending on what um, your shader is doing um, you can do that I've changed the material to one that allows uh, that looks at the vertex colors and once that's picked here I can use this tool and paint in set it to this sort of purple and I know that this material will use that index that vertex color for a gravel type so I can paint that in just using this tool here let's make this a little bit tighter you can paint in a little gravel path if we want in this world right here so you can do that in addition to of course being able to just dynamically shape your terrain around that as you want have our gravel smooth it out very nice um, ambient occlusion so if you have a vertex shader that will use the alpha channel for the to to shade the world you can do that this button up the top here will rebuild your terrain um, after you've picked different parameters so there you have episode one of Ruomoko the Maori god of the earth inspiring this 3d voxel based terrain engine and beyond I hope you've enjoyed it please contact me through the Unity forums um, if you have any questions or comments and look forward to future editions that, uh, in which I hope to show off some of the other features that are coming out through this and answer some of your questions. Take care.